You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. Thank you for everyone who is joining us. As always, uh, we just did just listen to some questions. It has been a very productive January here at Drone U. And um, just a heads up, we will be at Geo Week. So if you are headed up to uh, Colorful Colorado for Geo Week, which is ASPRS and a lot of other conferences that have kind of combined into one large conference, we will be there. So come say what's up. Trent, myself, and PJ will be there. Um, I will only be there one day. Uh, PJ and Trent will be there for four. So you can uh, reach out and uh, you know talk to Trent, talk to PJ. And if you want, lear- want to learn more, about our props program, that enterprise hybrid drone training, then you can get all the information um, there. And uh, yeah, might even do some interviews, who knows? So thank you again for joining us. Thank you for all the really, really, really nice testimonials that have come in through questions. Uh, We've got a show coming up uh, where we're gonna try to answer the question that also kind of came with a testimonial, but I just wanna say thank you. Um, Also, um, we did our first coaching call and one of the questions that had come through on the coaching call was, uh, ideological perception based kind of issue and Rob and I and PJ talked about it prior to the call and helped out two of our students to the point of getting like literally book long emails of appreciation saying thank you so much I've been stuck in this mindset forever and you really just helped me completely break through that and and that's the type of stuff that's really why we're here you know you could get really good at drones but that only gets so fun. You could get really good at drones and fly on set until you realize everyone has an ego and it only gets so fun. When you get really good at drones and you can help other people get really good at drones, that's the ultimate happiness. At least it is for me because I feel like I've experienced the other two and I've experienced heartbreak and helping other people is really nature's true weed. That's all I got to say. Huh. Well said. Yeah. And I'm Rob. <laughs> yeah, welcome to another show. Rob, what do you think of all this uh, weekly six to eight inches of snow? I'm digging it. I'm digging it. My kids hate it, but they're stuck here, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we've been told that it's been a an unusual year here in Colorado as far as the amount of snow and the length of... Uh, how, well, how long the snow sticks around on the roads, at least the interior roads and so forth. So I don't think that we'll get used to this in terms of future winters, which is fine. Um, but I'm excited that all the reservoirs are going to be full and, and, you know, I guess Arizona and California will have plenty of water from up here as well. Yeah. So in Nevada, golly, this water goes all over the place, um, which is cool. So anyways, no, loving it. I think it's great. And we actually, Paul made me go fly in the snow a little bit last week. It's going to be quite relevant for one of the questions we've got coming up uh, in the next subsequent shows. That's for sure. Yeah. When I say made me fly, it wasn't hard. Um, As cold as, well, you, you, you know, fill in the underline how you would describe. Cold AF. Really, really cold. (laughs) But uh, it was still fun. No, it was great. It's always fun to fly. It really is. It really is. And we have so many cool places to fly. And I think Rob also got to see that really cool drone sign that you would think says no drone zone, but actually is like, no, fly your drone here. It's cool. Just don't fly over people and uh, make sure you have your airspace authorization and make sure your drone is registered. And if you have an emergency, call this number. It's like the coolest sign ever at a park. Common sense. Yeah. It, 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 at least it should be. It, yeah. Couldn't agree more. So anyway, let's get right into today's question. It should be quick as we are kind of talking about how one one particular drone you member is moving up in the drone world, which is something that we talk about here all the time. You really should be thinking about what is your end game when you're getting into drones, which may be hard to think about because uh, a lot of people do this for the experience, getting outside, doing something new, innovative and fun. That's like the opposite of their old corporate job. So you got to be thinking about, you know, what you would like to do. You don't have to have a plan, but just be thinking about it. This particular member is uh, taking over a drone team and they're utilizing a certain software and he's asking about the propensity of utilizing that software. And 
I will say our experience with TBC is limited, but it's my understanding in a lot of the construction clients that we've worked with and how it's used. And so I think maybe we might clarify this point, but I think another point to really discuss is just uh, the difficulties in running a drone team. And I will say to all of you out there who are drone pilots, you know, kind of moving up in these positions because they're, they're becoming very available, to be honest. Um, you've got to be thinking about what can go wrong and this brings me to an important point that um, Stacy Sacco, who is now the dean of uh, the Anderson School of Management, taught me during the business challenge, which is the best business owners and only the successful ones, Paul, will be able to tell you every single way that their business could fail. And they're going to be able to answer all those questions with specific answers or strategies to avoid those problems. If you go to a business owner and you ask them a very hard question and they're not able to answer it, it's not if, but when they fail. And so you've got to be thinking about that too, as a business owner, how could this fail? What could we do um, to try to mitigate that or stay in our lane or whatever? Long story short is when you become a drone program manager, there's a lot of bad things that can happen. And so we're going to talk about that and more in a subsequent show. Let's hear that question. Hey guys, this is Chris from Tucson. I'm going to be taking over the construction company I work for is drone department in the next few weeks. And I'm wondering if you guys have any information or insights or experience with Trimble Business Center. Okay, that's the software they use. They run a uh, Phantom 4 RTK drone. Any pros, cons, anything you can. I would be very appreciative. Thank you very much. I appreciate the hard work you guys put in. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, wow, I just have a whole new perspective on uh, Tucson, Arizona, based on Paul's little whispering in my ear. Um, TMI, frankly. No, anyways, uh, I was born there. That's what I'm here for. So I still, I kind of have an affinity. I always wanted to go to the U of A. That's my goal. My Well, not my goal. My dream was to play baseball at U of A. Didn't happen. That's okay. I'm happy to be in Northern Colorado. But anyways, thank you for the question. Congrats on getting the uh, bump up in uh, responsibility. That's super cool. Obviously, you're doing some good things there. And uh, yeah, let's tell them what we know both about Trimble Business Center, which sounds like not a lot, but a little bit. Well, and TBC has expanded a lot in the last few years, but it's my understanding the Trimble Business Center is really utilized for managing georeference data sets. Specifically, like let's say we go out and we take our rover and we shoot points with that. And if it were a Trimble rover, right, we would use TBC to process those points and then be able to get that data and say, apply it for our ground control points, apply it for um, any CAD work that we're doing. Um, it's really utilized a lot for survey as a whole. I think recently they did actually add a photogrammetric processor, if I remember. So I think you can do mapping workflow inside of TBC, yep, as you're mm -hmm. pulling up right now. And so I think it does streamline the process a little bit. But what I would say is that if I remember correctly of what engine they're using, there might be certain, like, let me put it to you this way. I would not be building lifelike 3D models in TBC. Would I be doing surveys, Alta surveys, assuming I had a surveyor's license? Um, would I be doing, you know, engineering topo and elevation grading work in there? Oh, yeah, 100%. Would you be doing lifelike 3D models? Mm, probably not. Um in all honesty, buddy, I'm not sure that we're going to be the best answer for you. Um, I think key questions to ask yourself is, uh, what are the methodologies of organization of data? Meaning, once you produce a map or a uh, deliverable, like a, a DTM, a DSM, um, that looks like PIX back, backdrop. This one here? Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, I'm sure it can do volumetric measurements. I'm sure it can do a lot of things. I'm sure it's actually really good at certain surveying based work, like planometrics that you do on these maps and models. Um, I think it's great. But where is this data being organized? Is it being kept in TBC? Do you have a backup? Are there certain security protocols that you have to follow? Um, you know, just ask the regular questions of like, how is map processing done? Are you paying per user? What's the output? What's the engine? What I will say in our experience of, of training certain groups is that 
This is used primarily as a means of gathering georeference data that is then embedded into a map vis-a-vis -vis another piece of software. Hmm. Um, but that was probably two or three year old data. So it, it could have changed. TBC is going to be a geo week. This is a great question hmm. um, to bring on to them because the other thing too is like, how are you organizing your flight plans? Can you see a historical data of that? Um, because groups like Measure might do a much better job at that. Or uh, ANRA, for example, there's a lot of different, you know, opportunities. So how is it organizing your output data, your deliverables, your drone data, your flight logs? How is it managing your employment information, your equipment information, et cetera? Because what I will say is that if I didn't know what a company was using TBC for, I would ask them very bluntly, Rob, what's the problem that you're trying to solve, right? Mm -hmm. What's the deliverable that you're trying to create? How frequent do we have to do this? What is the volume I'm looking at? And then look at their workflow and discern how scalable that is. I mean, you know, just do a project management audit, essentially, of the system to see if it's the best system. I'm not sure that we're in the best position to answer that question, in all honesty. Is this a competitor of Optelos, in a No, sense? it's a competitor to um, uh, Leica and SmartNet. SmartNet is the okay. equivalent from Leica. But in terms of the photogrammetry and the processing that they are apparently now doing mm -hmm. and then storage, there's just a lot of questions about it. Well, yeah. and, and I think a lot of people who have been listening to us to it for a long time, Rob, what would you think that I would say about utilizing a third party cloud of another engine? What do you, what do you think I would say? Just go to the engine itself. Bingo. Uh -huh. More control, better data, more reliable systems, more scalable. Well, but unless they've built layers on top of it that are super helpful to the company. Tote like Optelos did. Yeah. 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 But right. I don't, I just don't know enough. Hmm. And I know that people are like, what? But hey, we got to be real here, right? Well, yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So maybe talk a little bit then about um, some of the challenges of running a, a, a drone department or whatever, a drone group and things that uh, Chris should look out for there. Well, and I mean, I think this is also relevant to the question um, that we got from Jennifer that we're about to answer um, regarding the difficulties of running a drone program. Because also I'm sure their TBC is integrated with whatever system that they're using to collect and aggregate points. Um, now, if they're using a Phantom 4 RTK and they're not using anything else as far as equipment, I'm not sure TBC would be the best solution for you, in all honesty, especially in states that you have free uh, VRS or free virtual reference station, you know, which is essentially what the RTK is connecting to through TBC for Trimble Business Center. So, but I mean, we've used Trimble. Trimble's obviously a good product. We just haven't dug much into the TBC side of things. Correct. Yeah. 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 No, they make great, great. Well, I mean, you see their stuff you know being what? used all over the place. This brings up a yes. This brings up a really good opportunity of where TBC could be used very, very efficiently for anyone doing photogrammetric work. Which is Trimble just launched their new DA2, which is the most affordable RTK unit on the planet. It's $400. And now do you have to have a TBC subscription for a year for it to connect to the network, acquire positioning, record positioning, etc.? Yes, you do. Um, that's not it. Uh, DA2, Delta Alpha. Take, oh yeah, Delta Alpha 2. Uh, yep. It looks like a little hockey puck. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Super cool. I saw them, uh, those being used on I-25 for really? the construction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I saw another one connected to, um, oh, what is it called? It's not an excavator. The big tractor with the giant plow on the front. Oh, just a bulldozer? Yeah, I guess just a bulldozer. Hmm. Because it was, uh, they were doing collection and then measuring elevation deviation and then connecting the DA2 to the unit to just do it automatically or autonomously. So... It's pretty sweet. So, I mean, is TBC a, a viable solution? A hundred percent, yes. Could there be better workflows for um, whatever it is that you guys are doing at the construction company? There very well could be. It's just with the limited information that we have, um, it's kind of hard to answer that question. But for drone pilots out there, if you are looking for a very... I mean, this is cheaper than arrow points here, ladies and gentlemen, and you get your data a lot faster... And if your data doesn't work, you know it right then and there. Whereas with arrow points, you're going to have to come back and refly it and all that crap. So if you're looking for a cheap RTK solution and, uh, you know, cloud engine 
because your company is already using that, TBC could be a phenomenal product. And I think this is a great thing to go uh, research a little bit more at GeoWeek and maybe even give TBC an opportunity to speak on this particular point. Yeah, 100 percent. It's pretty. And they're based in um, Denver, the Denver area. I didn't know that. Geospatial capital of the world. That's right. <laughs> That's right. There's a little plug for Trent. Uh, yeah. On good. Why'd you leave, man? Seriously. Yeah. He just, he loves crime. That's all. So. <laughs> <laughs> he did go from uh, San Fran to Baltimore. He effectively, sure did. Right? He sure did. Yeah, I'm just messing with you, buddy. You know, yeah. we love you. So. Anyways. All right. Cool. Well, hopefully that helps somewhat, Chris. Um, if you want to call back with more specifics about what you guys are doing and maybe wait a couple weeks after we've been to GeoWeek. <laughs> that would be good as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, outside of the normal TBC stuff, I know they have all this new, all these new features. Um, I just, I and mean, a lot of the construction companies that we work with right now in props, what are the big hangups, right? Organization of flights, organization of all these data sets and ability, like one of the most valuable things that we're seeing with our construction clients is like, let's say that you take a... Uh, an uh, ortho mosaic of a particular construction site, which we're doing right now, weekly, uh, over on 50th Street. Mm -hmm. um, and then they want to see every single one of those orthos in one pane and be able to slide across the ortho mm. and slide across in time. It's like it's like a whole new form of time lapse. It's like the old flip book. <laughs> Yeah, ex yeah, yeah. <laughs> Digital flip book. Yeah, and I mean, Drone Deploy does it with a couple of maps, but it's limited on how many. Pix40 Cloud does it, but Optelos, you can have an unlimited number. Uh, I know Propeller does it as well. Propeller also does visual efficiencies, which I think is cool, but um, Optelos allows you to upload all these orthos and literally slide across time. It's probably one of the coolest features I've ever seen with drone mapping. And mm -hmm. I showed it to one of our biggest construction clients, and he was like, I need that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to... Hard to live without once you know it's out there. I think they trademarked it. It's like ortho compare or something like that. Mm. So very cool feature that they have. Um, and I will, this brings up an important point, Rob, which is some of the existing systems in businesses may need to be revisited after a few years. If they work great and it costs too much money to change the system or the people who understand the system, it's probably not worth it. But if there's a more manageable methodology of scalability in completing these missions, there may be something else. I don't know. Trimble could be it. I don't know. Hmm. Well, perhaps we'll find out. We need to get one of those DA2s, don't we? We sure do. To mess yeah. around with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Um, let's run down to Denver and just drop in on them. And we should just buy one through Trent because Trent already has a Trimble oh, does reseller he? account. Yeah. Right. And that brings up a, the point, too, of like, you know, we don't sell drones here, um, but we have Trent who sells props. And Trent, also, as our director of sales, is uh, is doing physical drone sales through Wingtra. And this is, okay. Okay, Rob. This just hit me. Here's the value of this show. If I have Wingtra and I'm within a 20-mile baseline of a tower, I don't need Trimble Business Center. There's your, there's your, there's your efficiency savings right there. Yeah, boy, the, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there, though, there in sure terms is. of, you know, what the needs are, what the use cases are, et cetera. Yeah, if I was doing more than 400 acre construction sites on a weekly basis and I needed to do it quickly and I didn't want to spend a lot of money on ancillary GPS equipment, I could get the missions done the fastest and most accurate with a Wingtra and not need extra uh, georeferencing equipment, which is like the, the meat and potatoes of value. 100%. Yeah, again, if the use cases are there and you have enough business to use that or enough, uh, I don't know, airtime for it, so to speak, because of the work that you do or your company does, obviously it makes a ton of sense. But for 400 bucks, it's hard to beat. It sure is. It sure is. It's a big is. delta to make up. Now, if you purchase a DA2, there's one more thing you might need, which is some drone U landing pads. So you can pick those up, thedroneu.com. That's going to do it for us today. <laughs> My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask a Drone U. <laughs> <laughs>